you're watching Keep It Fit, my name is Jaredan, and we talk about health, fitness, wellness, and that kind of thing. And if you are into that, please don't forget to subscribe and like. And today we we are very very honored to have to have in line with our previous uh, podcast type. So th obviously this is a live interview. Uh, last time we had the fittest Filipina in 2021. So this time we have the fittest Filipino <laughs> in 20. Uh, <laughs> what year? <laughs> what year was that? Because you, you'd, you'd have to qualify like ano ba? when the Open was here and then we had a country level, so that, that would take her. What, what year did you make it to regionals? 2012. So 2012. 2012? Yeah! Well, that's when I met you. 2012, yeah, I, I dropped yeah, my... Yeah, 2012, 2012, 2012 individual, 2013 individual. Regional. In 2014 you didn't go? 2014. Regional. Um, I decided to, you know, work-life balance. Okay. I think I had priorities here in Manila then. So, I decided to be an alternate. So we have with us none other than this guy is like literally a legend in the Filipino CrossFit community. This is OG. Paolo Tatat. OG. Hello, Tito Fit fans, subscribers. <laughs> fans um, talaga. I'm Paolo Tatat. People call me KP in the community, but I, I'm Paolo. Um, regular guy, I have a day job, but been loving CrossFit for the last 11 years. He's a legit, siya yung legit Tito Fit. Kasi when I was new in CrossFit, like, Quick story time. There were only two uh, CrossFit affiliates in the Philippines back then. back then. Only two. This was circa 2012. Uh, I dropped by where he was training. I wasn't part of that affiliate. I was part of the other one. And uh, I dropped by to buy Reebok Nanos. I remember. <laughs> so, I remember. He, so you want to know how old, uh, how long we've been here? So that was the Reebok Nano 2. Yeah. I met KP there. He was yeah. training for it was like super serious, you know, everyone was goofing around. But there's this guy doing bench presses, super oh, no, heavy no, 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 bench no. presses. I wasn't doing bench presses, I remember. I was doing back squats. I was doing back squats. Back squats I, ba? I feel like No. I like bench okay. press was a part of the program. I remember. What? I was doing back squats. <laughs> and then you were dealing with Mickey. Yeah, yeah. And then you got the shoes and everything. And then while I was resting, Mickey introduces yeah. to you. Oh, see this is Jerry Jerry on the blah blah blah. Oh hi, nice to meet you. So that's how I met. I, I was literally like green to CrossFit. I, I probably had done all of five total walks at the time. And then I was looking at him doing back squats. I was like, what the hell? What do these guys live? And I was like, this is insane. So at the time, I was just, uh, you know, typical bodybuilding style workouts. Every now and then, some functional training. But uh, how do you get into CrossFit so early? Such an early adopter. Well, I've always had an active lifestyle. Okay. High school, college, I was part of the party volleyball. After graduation, you know, you wanted to focus on work. I kind of got fat, okay? Okay. So I wanted to lose weight again. And, you know, I I first did a lot of strength training, power yeah. lifting, okay? Okay. Then it kind of got rutinary. And then I heard of CrossFit, um, you know, from friends in the U.S. I think it was still in its infancy in the U.S. No? Okay. But then, it's funny, this is how I, this is how I, I chat upon it. So I was on Facebook. And then you know those uh, ads, the Facebook ads. Yeah. I see it, and I see a number. Okay. And then, and then I text it, but no reply. Wala pa, wala pa reply. Okay. And then that same week, my sister asked me, "Oh, you texted the Migi di Huh? How how did I text Migi in CrossFit? Asa yon? So oh, so you already knew Migi no, at the time. I I, I knew Migi more than acquaintance back then. Okay. okay. Migi was more friends with my sister. Okay. But because Ateneo, Ateneo College, yeah. um, kind of knew each other, lots of common friends as well. Yeah. And then, yun nga, that's it, right? And then, um, eventually, he replied and said, you know, join us in Ultra. Ultra pa? Ultra pa. The, the box was, in, was, it, uh, was under construction. So what year was this? This was late 2010. Oh, wow. Okay, late 2010. Late 2010. Late 2010. And then the, because the box was open 2011, but we did those. So I remember my first workout. It was uh, a Tabata workout, burpees, squats, push ups, and I think sit ups or B ups, if I'm not mistaken. And like any CrossFit experience, you get dogs, and you know, after that. You throw up. No, they throw up. Hooked ever since. Um, that, was an, that was nighttime, but then Miggy and his team had 
morning sessions. So I would wake up at six, seven. Yeah. And then, you know, we do the morning sessions. And well, ever since, that's been it. Went to the box, um, became coach. Then from coach, became the regional athlete and the rest is history. So literally 11 years. 11 years 11 in years. CrossFit. Yeah. Which is like, that's crazy. So for those of you who think, that you're not gonna last very long in CrossFit, especially at a fairly high level, because you're gonna get hurt at some point. He's living proof. 11 years in, still training at the level that I can only dream of when I get to his age. <laughs> Actually, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, when you talk about injuries, right? Are you gonna get hurt in CrossFit and all yeah. that? You know, I think with CrossFit, I've only had one injury. One major one injury. I've had more injuries in my other sports, to be honest. So, what are your other sports? Uh, well, varsity volleyball, like, like volleyball I said. Volleyball, varsity. So okay. there was a point I would be still playing. Collegiate? After college, yes. Oh, nice. After college. Basketball, of badminton. Course. Everyone gets fit uh, in basketball. Period. I, I think I kind of focus more on volleyball, badminton, and basketball. As the ones that hurt uh, you? Yeah, yeah, as the ones that hurt me. I mean, I, I tore my ACL in basketball. I had a major uh, grade. Rain, uh, popped my hamstring a few times. So, <laughs> and dami, and dami talaga. And still, he was able to start CrossFit. So that's a takeaway there for you guys. Huh? For those of you who say, oh, I have existing injuries, I can't do this, do that. There's always a way if you want one. <laughs> para para, para para, literal. So what what was the injury you got in CrossFit um, over that 11 year period? Okay, um, I think I had like a stiff hip. Uh, okay, but I think my my ITV was a bit tight. Yes. And then what happened was, um, I think I was doing a front squat, and then you know the, it just like spasmed. So basically, my hip, my hip kind of shifted. So I needed to do therapy for like a month or two. The only thing was I wasn't able to lift. Okay. But I was able to do body, body weight. The body weight stuff. So okay. I think I kind of took just like two weeks off, just to like rest and. Uh, get treatment, but after two weeks of you know, double unders, uh, body weight squats, push ups, you know, even like uh, gymnastic stuff, I, I could do. So it's not to say I wasn't active, even yes. I was injured. Which is a uh, good insight because, you know, sometimes I, we get, you know, athletes, clients, and then they ask us, uh, you know what, I can't because uh, I don't, I'm not sure, I got hurt, and then you ask them when this injury occurred, oh, like two years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you're okay. Yeah. yeah you're okay. Yeah. The body has a, has its own like, innate way of healing itself. The body is it's such an impressive vehicle. Yeah. Human structure. I mean, I'm still impressed with how athletes now, and even, let's say, like, Pushing our physical limits. There's one thing that I've, I've realized in CrossFit. It's amazing what people can do, how they push their physical limits. So 2012, you went individual regionals. This was the pre previous format. 2013, you went uh, team regionals. So in the regionals, uh, we were part of the Asia region back then. You compete against... It was uh, so 50? Individuals was top 50. Top then, 50 like, in Asia. That they started, yeah. Right. And Asia would include all countries Except you know Australia. Except Australia. Because remember when right. the Pacific Regionals condensed? Yeah, yeah, Australia and Asia. Which was uh, more competitive. Yeah, a lot. A lot of Asians were not happy at the time. Yeah. 2012. Would you say that that was? Would you say that was like the happier, the fittest you were? Actually, here's the thing. I believe the fittest I was is recent years ago. Okay. It's actually, um, 2012 was just scratching the surface. Okay. And then. Um, obviously, I came into CrossFit at a more advanced age. Yeah. In fact, like when the box opened. For, for them to know, uh, how old were you when you went okay, in? So, <laughs> so, for full disclosure, I'm actually 45 now. I, I obviously, I joined CrossFit like I was 34. I made the regional okay, 34. 36. 36. And in fact, I think I was the uh, second oldest competitor at that time in regionals. Because there was no masters at the time. There was no masters. For regionals, yeah. yeah. No it was open. <laughs> So when the master's divisions came about, so I saw it as a new opportunity you know, to make a push. I mean, it was everybody's dream. I remember, this. Yeah, I remember it was, this. It was everybody's dream, let's say, to have make a, it to the games. To make it to the games, one way or the other, right? So I said master's was a good opportunity. Um, you know, I think I could handle these guys. So yeah. I really committed. This was what, 2018? Uh, 2017. No, no, no. um, 16, 17, 18. More, more oh, all those three years. Okay. Because 15, 15 was like a transitional year. 
16 was like a trying out year, but I think I put all my marbles on the set on the uh, year seven. Yeah, I remember. I remember it. Then, talaga, I, said, I really fully committed. I invested in the coach. You were I, checking your leaderboard, talaga, and, and, You know, leaderboarding at its highest. <laughs> um, and and I think that the highest rank that I got no, was 57 worldwide. 57 worldwide. Uh, 40. Was this 35 to 39 or 40 to 44? 44. In 40 to 44 years old. At a, at a given time, he would have been 57, 57 fittest male, not in the Philippines, not in Asia, but in the world. That was probably like prime KP because like mentally, um, you know, I knew where I was at. Physically, I knew what my capabilities were. Um, you know, no injuries, nothing. Nice. And I uh, think you know when I look back, you know, parang, I I kind of think, parang, how the hell did I actually do achieve that? this? And you have a day job, like you said. Okay. You do have a day job. Here's the thing. There was, there was a part in those three years that I was actually working from Clark Pampanga. So <laughs> I would be, you know, there was a time I trained in um, F&B. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, with Coach with, Merwin. With Coach Merwin. Shout out Coach Merwin. Another Tito. Maybe soon. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see them. Yeah. And then, but there was, there was a time that I would like to come back and forth. I come back to Manila 7, 7.30. Go straight to the box, coming from Clark, and then you know, literally, Eastwood. Eastwood. Eastwood, yes, and literally, and literally close the box at like 11. And I did that, like, you know, and what, what time do you make the trip to Clark the next day? 6 a.m. Oh my gosh, so how was your recovery? Their actually, the recovery was good okay. uh, for, for a few reasons. So, obviously, I get I get a lot of night sleep, okay, and the travel to Clark and coming home, I would nap on the bus. Oh, so, so you didn't so, have to so worry yourself with driving right. there. So technically, yes. So I took the bus every day. Okay. Uh, so technically, I would have like as much as possible eight nine hours. Nice. Total. Combined, total, total, combined. along with yung, the commute sleep. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then like maybe sometimes lunchtime I would nap. Okay. So really? so the it it kind of it kind of worked it, it kind of worked and um, but end of the day you know like doing that every single day. And I remember like Sundays, I would nap. It was like such a luxury to nap. How long did you, were you able to sustain this kind of uh, routine? Three years, four years? Three years, wow. Nice. Yeah. So understanding. <laughs> no, I know, I think the, the important the yeah. important thing there is to like the, being on the same page. Because actually like before, when CrossFit was all fun, diba? Parang and everything. Yeah, yeah. Right? So you go to the box, you go work out and then, you know, one hour or two hours, you're just chatting and next thing you know, oh my god, it's late. Pala. Yeah. But this one, la para, I needed to like really... Business. Um, you know, there, there's a goal, there's an objective in mind, you know, this is something that, you know, probably personal for me that I'd like to achieve. So I needed like a wife. A yes, good support system. To, to be very That's supportive, cool. to understand that the demand of this is like really great. Yeah. I like the important things for our kids, like the birthdays, the graduations, the moving up, and I'll, I'll be there. But as far as like the training and all that, you know, this is something that I, you know, I, the work I did back then was, you know, something in my wheelhouse. So it was easy for me. Um, I could manage my time, still get the results, and just like balance everything out. So even like nutrition, I, I so dialed it in, you know. Um, in my family, we have like Sunday lunches, as in like, Buffet style Sunday lunches. Yeah. Imagine like you have all the pasta, pancit, ice cream, cake, chocolate. And B basically, your basic Filipino yeah. spread. And more. And, and more. more. Right? And more. Or let's say birthday, and then you have like, you go out to a hotel or a restaurant yeah. to eat. And then you know, you just, you just, be, eat, you just be eating rabbit food and meat, diba? Maybe a little a little carbs there, but you know, you, just, you want to be on. Still, kumbaga, on point. I mean, I'd have my cheat days. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest about that, but most of the time, it's just like focus. Damn, that's insane. Yeah, how many kids do you have? So I have four. Four kids, and uh, only one does CrossFit. Okay, so what's what's nice now, because we have stuff at home. It's like, the pandemic. Yeah, stuff at home. So I have two boys after KL. Okay. Guys, no? They kind of want to learn how to squat, deadlift. Okay. So I have a, I have the youngest yeah. one. In fact, like he's been asking if I can bring him to the box every now and then because he wants to like. How old is he? He is ten. Wow, it starts. It really starts with how you behave. Your, your. I think your, your kids, your family will basically see that 
and you know yeah. they can just model this. But the thing is, like with my kids, example, like uh, I didn't push him into CrossFit. In fact, I wanted him to choose his sport. Yeah. So I'm not your soccer dad or your basketball yeah. dad. You know, whatever. You know, if it if you even go to dance sport, okay. Okay lang yan. Basta mahal mo yan. Okay lang yan. Okay, I support okay. you. But then ultimately he chose CrossFit, and you know, for uh, you've met Kel, you've seen yeah, him. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, he's strong. He's, he's a beast of a kid. He's competing. Beast of a kid. Um, and yon, that's it. No? So, but with my kids, I, I just tell them, you know, whatever makes you happy, whatever sport makes you happy, I just want you guys to have a healthy lifestyle. Uh, that's it. So, if you want to do jump rope, if you want to do this, yeah, okay lang. Yeah, but I think you know that you you're you're like Kel choosing CrossFit, and now your other two kids are very interested in it. It's because they see you and how passionate you are, how disciplined you are. I think that really plays a part of it. Yeah, I, I'd like to think that the influence is there um, from a parental standpoint, the environment. Yeah. But then also the say whatever the school or other environments that also support that. Yeah. That that value that, that uh, it's true like mindedness kind of helps. Yeah. So I'm unfortunate also to put my kids into schools where they have friends who are also active. So that, that kind of helps push. So you believe that you're 45 now. That you can still continue this in your 50s, 60s? What's the plan? Okay. Um, well, obviously I love CrossFit. You know, I've been doing this 11 years. I think okay. my, my love now is still as much as strong as the love I've had when it started. I, I found it to be a really good model in terms of like sustaining a healthy lifestyle. You know, when we started out um, CrossFit, it was more like an input-output thing. You know, you do CrossFit so you can eat stuff that you like. <laughs> and I, yeah. But then, like, I got into that, you know, both coaching and competition mode, right? You have to practice what you preach. You have to walk the talk. People who know me or I talk to them, you know, fitness is a pyramid, where it, or it's three points that are important. The output, the exercise that you do, equally important, or sometimes I'd say the most important is actually the rest. Uh -huh. I, li I, like, I like your question a while ago, when you were saying about, like, how much rest is put in while training, right? Yeah. For me, rest is important. And then obviously the nutrition, but obviously garbage in, garbage out, yeah, and, and that, that kind of thing. So, but let's say if you look, if you look at that, no, that's that's something that I kind of espouse with the years already. And I tell Tess all the time, like, it, you know, I, now I love my sleep more, or I have to have more rest, more more sleep because as you get older, good go about it. Yeah, good so about you, you kind of feel it also. Your your recovery is not as on point um, as before. You think you can, but reality, your body's telling you something. And, and a lot of the science now, like even when you listen to a lot of these leaders in biohacking or in, yeah. in sports science, uh, they say, you know, whatever all of these supplements and all of these hacks are basically icing on the cake. The most important supplement is sleep. Sleep and real food. Yes, exactly. Real food. Oh, but disclaimer, I still have cake. Ice cream I mean, yeah, I live a little. If you, if you follow, follow me on Facebook or any, on, on, on my IG stories, you know that part of it is food. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're all foodies here. So yeah, I, that, that's, I think that's how, how most of us get along because not all of us can make it to regionals. Or <laughs> <laughs> so, we get along with the food. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'd like to circle back to your point no? so about, let's say, sustainability doing this. To, to your later years. Yeah. Back. So, yeah. Um, I think it also comes with the life stages that I have now. Mm -hmm. um, understanding what's important. Looking at CrossFit as, let's say, just to sustain a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Right? I mean, if there's an opportunity to compete, why not? Why not? Right? Yeah, yeah. But at this point, you know, even those like in box, um, you know, the coaches in, in Mapala, you know, I, I, I make it known to them, right? You know, we see a workout, there, KT, go for the PR or something that extent. <laughs> there, you know, why why die over a workout these days? <laughs> you know, we just want a good, you know, be happy, get That's my life. Friends. That's literally my life. <laughs> uh, get a good sweat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm happy like when you PR because I think 2020 I still PR my DD. Oh nice. So DD is your your you know barbell. Five rounds, seven, nine, six deadlifts, um, hand power yeah. yes, yeah. push tricks. I'm still able to PR that. What's your time for DD now? Uh, sub seven, sub six thirty. That's fast, guys. Sub so that's five rounds per time, and the weight is 155 pounds. Yeah. Twelve deadlifts, nine hand power cleans, six push jerks. Give it a shot. O only if you're safe and if you have the skill. Okay. For, so, <laughs> for how you advise, there's your there's your good things that I need. 
scale it down if, if you're not uh, confident that you don't hurt yourself chasing that 155 pound yeah. RX. So yeah, given that you mentioned DD, what's your favorite benchmark? Uh, work, uh, uh, workout, CrossFit benchmark. I've always been, I've always been. The DJ app is one of them. So, okay. But, but I think I, there's always an end where I think with Amanda. Amanda, wow. So he likes. Uh, Obviously, if you look at uh, KP structure, he's very big and he likes to push that heavy weight. But I'm surprised that you chose Amanda because Amanda's the muscle ups 975 yeah, with so the yeah, snatch, squat, squat, squat snatches snatch. and then the muscle ups. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think if ever, because like, I remember watching the games, um, well, the games the first time, and then like Amanda was like the opening workout. Yeah. And then like you know, you know, muscle ups. Is, I wouldn't say it's like a Olympus of like movements, right? But it's like one of the it's like a goal for like most and crossfitters. Yeah, it's yeah. like a, it's, it's for the casual crossfitter. Like it, it, you have to check that off the list. So it's like you have two technical movements: the snatch and the, the muscle ups, and you have to like do it as fast as you can. And, and the snatch, the squat snatch of Amanda, is the type of weight that you'll probably only be proficient with, like maybe depending on how gifted you are, like one or two years down the road. Yeah. yeah. So it's not something you can do as a beginner. Like a, yeah. yeah. So, so I think um, for some reason, I, there's Amanda. something with Amanda. There's something with her. But say, if you're going to ask me, like top three would be Amanda, Grace, and Grace. Didi. How about Fran? What's your fastest Fran time? My Fran time is 2.20. I, I was waiting for that. So for those of you who don't know, who don't know or are new to CrossFit. And actually when I was beat KP, that's when I hit that. That was just like 2017, uh, yeah. 16, 17, yeah. 18. So Fran is uh, 21 59 of uh, thrusters at 95 pounds and uh, pull-ups. And uh, it's notorious for making a lot of CrossFit newbies throw up. Yep. If you're elite, you can probably do it in sub 3 minutes. And there you are, 2 minutes and 20. Yeah. For your intermediate to advanced CrossFitters, 4 minutes or lower is the goal. That's a good, yeah, it's a yeah. good score. But 220 is insane. So I, was really, I was really happy about that one. Right, last, last two questions. Who are your, your bets for this year's CrossFit Games? And your favorite CrossFitters? Uh, okay, well first for, the, for this year's bets, I up, women it's the Tia. Okay. I just, yeah. No holes, you know, training as hard as she can. True. Um, and, and she just... She just really stands out. Yeah, on the floor. and you know, looking at even the women's here, you know, Brooke Welsh trains with her, but I still see the yeah. uh, um, coming out on top. Men's side is a bit open. Okay. Um, there are many, the thing is, there are many new faces. Yeah. So, I mean, you have those like Sunano Olsen, yeah, um, uh, BKG, BKG, and all that. Though, yeah. But there are just, I mean, you know, like, like Justin like, Medeiros. Yeah, like Medeiros and Quant from nowhere last year, right? Yeah. There are some other new guys who are equally impressive too. It's exciting. Uh, okay, because it's an open field. Eh. Uh, 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 no, Fraser's no longer there, but it's an open field, so like, you, know, you want to see who, who would come out on top. But women, it's clear cut. I think he is going to be there. Uh, favorite CrossFitters, well, obviously, being an OG, um, you know, I, I think starting out Chris Peeler. Oh wow. Oh, wow. No, no, but can Chris Peeler because Chris Peeler. Chris Peeler I guess, no, I like Steel. I, I love Steel. No, but you know a lot a lot in our box back then in, in the biz like Chris Peeler. Why? Because small guy. Small. Pinoy, Pinoy height. Yeah. Pinoy, Pinoy height. height underdog. How tall is Peeler? Is he like five, 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 six? Five, six, five, six, five, six, yeah. five, six. And he's and like 150 at that level. Yeah, right. So so very attainable for right. Pinoy. And, and then you, you you look at you look at what what he has accomplished. Yeah, yeah given his physical abilities and it's not to say that it's limited but what he has accomplished yeah so you know Spiller will be always there but and he's still training and he's probably around the same age as you are no i'm older you're older yeah. okay <laughs> so you know I, 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 um i remember 4044 because now i'm in like, supposedly in the 45 49 category all the OGs then, like Matt Chan, Jason Khalifa, and everything, and now in the 40 party four. Okay. So like Neil Maddox. I did I did like Yeah, he did win though, right? He did win. He so did but win. that year, that was the year that life stage happened. Life oh, happened. Yeah, life yeah. happened. So and obviously you're Yeah. I mean for what he has accomplished, how he put the CrossFit on the map. No. So I guess you're uh, I, I shouldn't ask you, Froning or Fraser. <laughs> I shouldn't ask you that yeah, question because yeah, 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 well, you I pretty much that. answered it. No, I mean, Parang ano na eh, like we have those GOAT discussions. Yeah, it's such a Jordan so, GOAT. Ano, but when you say GOAT, diba? GOAT meaning greatest of the era. GOAT, diba? Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, great, greatest of all time, greatest of the era. But then obviously there's like one year of the 
they coincided, you know, obviously. That was the only time, yeah. Crony went, went out on top. It's so kind of like the Jordan Kobe comparison. Yeah. For Kobe what was Razor a young player accomplished, you know, it's very impressive as well. It's very impressive. But, you know, I guess I'm, I'm just a Crony at art, free pop guy, <laughs> everything, lahat na. I'm programming mayhem, so what can you ask for, right? So. Sure. All right. Uh, if you have like three fitness tips to people who are who are watching this, who are not part of our circle, who have not done CrossFit, probably have a few uh, weights at home starting out during the pandemic. You know, what are your three top fitness tips? Tito, Tita H. Okay. Uh, I guess first and foremost is just to start, to have that mindset to start, uh, and. The first step will always be the hardest, but once you take that first step, you have your second step, third step, and that you have to have that mindset. You know? Regardless of how you look, how heavy you are, whatever part in your life that you are, you just have to start. Just do it. Just do it. Right? <laughs> um, second, ako, I would like, you know, if you're a newbie, right, maybe work out under supervision or work out with someone who can actually uh, you know, advise you, coach you that how you're moving. Because you know, once again, if you're starting at a later age, um, you know, we're no longer spring chickens. And especially if you've lived a sedentary lifestyle and you're not as flexible, not as mobile, if you haven't paid that attention, it would be helpful to have someone to supervise you on that, right? Give you the proper instruction, how to move, what weights to move, right? You know, we have a term, right? Meathead. Do not be a new fan, <laughs> right? And then, um, I guess last thing, you know, when you when you are in fitness, it should support work-life integration. Meaning that you know, it, for for me, like right now, I look at like uh, to have a balanced, healthy lifestyle. Someone with a family, with a full-time job, can do it at a high level for so long. That's 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 something to be yeah. admired. I, I think. If there's if there's one thing you know, if, you know I know Jordi asking for three points, but if there's one thing I'll say about CrossFit, where it's a conditioning program that's inclusive. So one of the things that CrossFit really um, teaches, or at least in terms of like the classes, the, the programming that's done, is the scaling part, the scalability. So regardless of whatever where you are in your fitness journey, and let's say whatever the workout, it can be tailored to where you are right now. To the so point that yeah. a grandmother can do it. A grandmother, a child, yeah. a Jordi, a Pao, an Austin, an Austin can, can, can do it. So it, it doesn't choose. You just have to choose, choose it. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll see him in the next one. Let us know in the comments what you thought of this video. If you agree with his tips. Uh, if you don't agree, if you disagree, let us know. And we'll see you in the next yeah. one. We love... We, we love uh, both, discussion. Uh, yeah, we have discussion. Healthy discussion. Good critique. Okay lang. <laughs>